The God Slayer V4 is the best PvE build in the game when it comes to sheer damage against bosses. Since it's one cycle gripping chaser, doing Primadon in- alright, you get it. This PvE build is pretty good when it comes to doing bosses, and I personally consider it to be the best PvE build in the game. But that's not true, because there is three other versions of the God Slayer build that you can consider to be better than the base one. If you don't know what PvE build I'm talking about right now, or what makes it so good, you should probably watch the showcase I made on it. I'll leave it linked in the description, and I'll put a card on the screen right now, if I remember while editing. But for those of you that have seen the showcase, don't worry because I still think the original version 4 is a better all around PvE build. Because today I'll be discussing the changes you can make to the original stats and talents of the build and how it affects its gameplay. We have a build with a lot higher damage, a tankier version, and one that is better than V4 in most ways, and is probably the closest thing we'll ever get to a God Slayer version 5. But for each of these builds, there is some drawbacks to using them, which we'll go over. Of course, if you want the actual build maker links for these PBE builds, you need to join my Discord, and subscribe if you want to see a lot of other broken PBE builds that I'm cooking up. But before we start, I've got to clear up a misconception. Grim is a better enchant than Astral if you're a really good PvE player. I use Astral mainly for the drip it provides, but Grim, due to it being a 20% damage buff to your M1s and mantras, is better on occasion. It's so close that it doesn't really matter what you use. The full videos explaining why these enchants are the way they are will be linked in the description, since I don't want to drag out this section too long. Anyways, the first build that we are discussing does a little bit more damage than the base V4, and only changes up two talents. You want to get Lava Serpent and Volcanic Glass. You'll need to get Eruption pre-shrine, due to the fact that you shrine your flame down. And as soon as you get the Crystal Path from Frost Roar, you'll be able to roll Volcanic Glass. Even though it doesn't show on the build maker, don't worry, you can get it without High Flame. What it does is it makes your Crystal procs deal more damage, since every time they proc, you'll end up causing an eruption. While the eruptions don't do a super high amount of damage, since you have low flame, you will get more chain stacks, as well as proc a lot of eruptions, since we're using a lot of ice mantras on this build. What this variant is really good at is bosses like Primadon, or if you want a one cycle chaser and Etheron even easier. However, the downside to this is you can't grip chaser, so you're basically capping how good you can get at the boss fight. Not being able to grip chaser does lose you quite a lot of time if you're trying to farm him for something like a Bloodforged Crown. It also makes Duke and Ferryman a little bit harder, since they'll get flung by the eruptions and crystal procs, and you can't roll off crystal or else you'll lose volcanic glass. So basically at the cost of higher damage, the build becomes a little worse for some bosses, but becomes a lot better for others. It really depends what you plan to farm. But we've still got two more variations of the God Slayer builds to go through. One that could be better than the base version, and a tankier one. That is a simple stat change of going 50 Fortitude pre-shrine instead of 40. This allows you to additionally get the To The Finish talent card. A common complaint I've seen about the God Slayer builds is the squishiness they have. This is a perfectly valid complaint, because even the best players may miss a parry or just mess up fighting bosses. Ordinarily, you'd be able to Condition Runner to heal most of your HP back, but if you're super low and want an extra safety net, then going 50 Fortitude for To The Finish really helps with that. You will end up losing Weapon Mastery at the end of the build, which results in about a 5% damage reduction to your M1s. However, this 5% doesn't matter too much in the end, since you can still easily 1-cycle and 1-cycle Grip Chaser without going into the fight with Chain of Perfection stacks. 
While I personally prefer more damage, this version is a very good alternative if you want a little more defense on the PvE build. This change can also be splashed into the previous variation, as well as the next one we're about to talk about. Speaking of this third variation, let's talk about the build that may be better than version 4. Rather than a simple stat change or new talents, we are going a whole different attunement on this build, because we are swapping out the 50 Iron Sing pre-shrine for Thundercall. Doing this gives three major changes to the build. It trades off Metal Ball and Metal Armament for Spark Swap and Lightning Cloak. With Spark Swap, you can teleport huge distances in layer 2. This is very good if you plan to speedrun. Plus, Spark Swap also has a neat interaction with Dupe, where you can Spark Swap with the servants before they even spawn in, letting you essentially skip most of the dungeon. It's a weird interaction, but it does save a fair chunk of time. Lightning Cloak, on the other hand, provides a 30%, I believe, swing speed buff. It's a bit better than Metal Armament in the long run, but is harder to use. Mostly because you have to be consistently attacking something or not getting hit by a boss. Otherwise, the Lightning Cloak will go on cooldown, and it's a lot longer than Metal Armaments as well. The longer casting time of Lightning Cloak can be pretty inconvenient too, and has resulted in me getting hit while casting it. But as long as you're watching what the boss is doing and timing the mantra right, it should be fine in the end. So if you're really good at doing bosses and want to save as much time as possible while putting in some more effort, it does make these changes a bit better in the end. But the final major change to this build is instead of going Oathless like the original one, we go Arc Welder. This is the singular best PvE Oath in the game, if you ignore the requirements to actually get it because while in the Arc Welder suit, you get a 20% damage reduction. This is very good if you don't need to be super mobile, like in the Primadon or Etheron fights, since you can equip this suit and it'll last a while. With this oath, you also get more mantra slots, which is very useful, because no metal ball means no glacial architect to send yourself super far up. So in addition to having Spark Swap and Lightning Cloak replacing the mantras, you'll also want to get Ice Lance. This can simply allow you to the Glacial Arctic. While it's a little worse than Metal Ball, it still does what it needs to on the build. With all of these changes combined, Nibrula, who this footage is from, managed to beat his record on Chaser by 15 seconds, getting a 3 minute and 4 second Chaser kill, which is very crazy if you consider this run is faster than other speedrunning builds that use wave dashing. And of course he gripped Chaser before the ceiling even fell, and went into the fight with no Chain of Perfection stacks. So basically, this final variant of the God Slayer V4 can result in faster times, higher DPS, and give you some extra damage reduction in fights. And the major trade-off being that you have to be really good at fighting bosses to actually notice this build being better than the base V4, and you have to put in a little more effort as well. So yet again, it's up to what you prefer. Anyways, what have we learned today? If you want more defense and less offense, then you go with version 4.1 and you'll still be able to one cycle Chaser. If you don't care about Duke, Ferryman or Chaser, you use version 4.2, since it'll give you more eruption damage to bosses like Primadon and Atheron. And if you really want to speedrun layer 2 and get some insanely fast times on boss kills, and are a true PvE demon, then you really want to use version 4.3 of the God Slayer build. These are all very good options, but trust me, all four of these PvEs, including the base V4, I still consider to be the best in the game, all of them one cycling chaser and shredding other bosses. All around though, I still personally use the base V4, since I find it a little more convenient and it's a better all around build, but it's up to you what one you want to pick. If you enjoyed any of these builds, make sure to like and subscribe, because I'm going to be dropping some more insane PvE builds very soon. And join the Discord if you want the stats too. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe and check out some other PvE content. And I'll see you all next time.